Hey guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another video. Now in this video, we are going to be covering ripple voltage. Ripple voltage happens within our electronic speed control. We have a diagram here that covers our power system in order for us to better understand what ripple voltage is. We have here our lithium polymer battery pack acting as the source of power for our speed control. From there, after the power is delivered to our speed control, it is then sent to our brushless motor. This is how we are able to make things move in radio controlled applications. Now it's important to understand, we have a graph that represents it, is that ripple voltage is the difference in voltage between a peak and valley. Now how we get those peaks and valleys is from our lithium polymer battery pack. When it's at rest and there's no power being drawn, it's gonna have a resting voltage. When you go and load that battery pack, it sags in terms of the voltage. And this is going to be measured right at the input side if you want to be looking at ripple voltage, which we are in this video. As we see these peaks and valleys, the difference between them is going to become what is known as ripple voltage. Now another thing that's important to understand is that this speed control delivers the power to our brushless motor at very high frequencies. So in other words, what happens is you get some power that's delivered from the battery pack to the speed control and then it goes and turns a coil within the motor on and off in a split second. This happens numerous times within the whole entire system per second. And every time this happens, you can imagine that the voltage, the power's turned on, current flows, and then it's shut off. And then this keeps happening. During this course, the battery is being loaded and then unloaded at a very high rate. This is where we see ripple voltage occurring. So now that we know what ripple voltage actually is, let's take it and understand it a little deeper. So we take this difference between our peak and valley and we go ahead, move it over here and we drop it on a different graph that now shows us what the ripple voltage is over time. So this was just the, vo the voltage of the battery pack over time. Now we're taking the section that we have here in terms of the peak and valley, we move it over to our other graph and we have now ripple voltage against time. Here we need to know, is what we see a problem? Well, what do we see? We see the voltage pattern, you know, hanging around this 1.0 volt mark. And then we see this peak here. And if you put your cursor on this, if you have a graph, there are some speed controls that will measure this for you. And then if you can log it, you can then take a look at this exact thing. You hold your cursor right at that point and it's gonna tell you that it's 2.7. We don't know what that means yet, but we'll get there. You can see during the rest of this, it does go up, it does get a little bit uh, higher near the end here, but then it kind of settles out and that's the all the data that we have in this specific graph. So what does this mean? Well, the maximum ripple voltage that we should have within our system is 10% of the nominal voltage. That is known as VNOM here. If we look at our power system here, we are using a six cell lithium polymer battery pack. We go ahead and figure out our nominal voltage of our battery pack and we get 22.2 volts for our 6S LiPo. We then look at what the maximum ripple voltage is for this example. We move the decimal place one uh, spot over and then we get 2.22 volts by taking our 10%. The 2.22 volts is the maximum ripple voltage that we should see in our power system throughout an entire run. This is only going to happen potentially in a peak in one location. If it's in one location, that is a cause for concern. So here we look at our graph and we see that the ripple voltage here peaked at 2.7 one time within our run. This to me is concerning. We don't want to see ripple voltage exceeding our 10% mark. Typically you would wanna see it like where it is averaging for the most part down here, but there is a spot and this could have been for a number of different reasons that we'll talk about at the bottom left of this uh, whiteboard here. So let's go in and talk about what can cause what we see up here in the graph. Uh, causes for ripple voltage, we've listed out a few. The primary thing that is happening, if any of these is happening within your system, is that you are damaging the capacitors on your electronic speed control. The capacitors are visible, though the round cylinders that are somewhere located near the input side of your electronic speed control. Now we have here the first point is that high amounts of load can contribute to high amounts of ripple voltage. 
And this is talking specific to the gear ratio on your radio control car or a propeller if you have a boat, helicopter, or airplane. If you have high amounts of load, you are drawing a lot of uh, current potentially, and that is one area where you can contribute to high amounts of ripple voltage. Another point that we have listed here is if you have extended the battery to ESC leads. So the battery to ESC leads are the ones that are in this diagram right here. If you extend those wires, you can contribute to higher ripple voltage. The last point that we have here is a weak battery pack. If this battery pack is weak, and we'll get to a little bit more of an example very shortly, this can also contribute to high ripple voltage. And as we've said, this can damage the capacitors that are located on your electronic speed control. If you damage those capacitors, you can bet that that speed control will probably burn out and no longer be usable. So we wanna make sure that we avoid that by monitoring what our ripple voltage is in our power systems. Now, typically you'll get into trouble when you have high demand uh, applications where you're pulling a lot of current or maybe you extended your wire leads significantly and you're pulling a lot of current when you go and stack these up on top of each other that's when you get into areas where it's quite critical so let's move into our last area here and talk about how can we improve ripple voltage well ripple voltage as you can see can be improved by doing a number of different things the first point that we have here on improvements is reduce the load so here you'd go and take your gearing and you'd reduce the gearing so that your motor turns more times for every turn of the wheels this will reduce the load on your motor and allow it to pull less current causing less strain and stress on your power system. Uh, same idea with the propeller. If you have an airplane or helicopter, reducing the propeller on the airplane, for example, in diameter or pitch is going to reduce your load. Now for me, I like performance, I like going fast. This is definitely something that I cross off my list. I don't wanna ever do that. Uh, so I'm gonna be focusing more on the rest of them when I look at my own power system. So the next one that we have here is a shorter wire length. If you're able to go to shorter wire lengths, and you have to keep in mind that if you use these components or plan to use your electronic speed control in another application, you gotta think about shortening them. You don't wanna shorten them to the point where you can't use them and you have to extend them again. That's kind of like a pain. You don't wanna get into that. Uh, so if you do have an opportunity to shorten the wire lengths, that is going to help improve vo ripple voltage within your power system. Another area here is high current connectors. Uh, it would be the same idea for the wire that makes up your run here. However, the wire that is made up within that speed control and battery has already been pre-selected by the manufacturer and it should be okay. However, the connectors is something that you select. It's something that you can put on connectors that can't deliver the power that maybe you even expected to pull out of that system. So try moving up to higher current connectors if you think that this might be an area of concern. The next thing that we have here, and it's highlighted, is higher discharge batteries. This is probably one of the number one reasons that you see uh, ripple voltage that could be high. Now we have an example over here, and I wanna talk a little bit to this example. As soon as I see these numbers, I see a 5025C battery pack with a 150 amp speed control, and I also see 6S, and 2400 kV. Right away, my, I'm throwing red flags at this power system. Why? Because I know 2400 kV is quite high for a 6S setup. You're gonna have a lot of potential to make a lot of power with this setup, which means you know we're stuck at 6S LiPo and the current is variable. If we load that system up significantly, we can actually pull some serious amounts of current. Now here's where it gets even more concerning. We look at our battery pack and it's a five amp hour battery pack. We take five 1000 divided by 1000 we get it in terms of amp hour instead of milliamp hour we take our 25c we multiply by what we just said there the 5 and that gives us 125 amps maximum continuous discharge this is the scary part. I see a speed control here that's rated at 150 amps, but yet my battery can only supply 125 amps. If I do load my radio control system up to the point where it can pull 150 amps, this is where I can cause damage 
to the battery pack. I can also cause damage to my speed control because of what we're talking about in this video, ripple voltage. That's why moving to a higher discharge battery is definitely one significant way that you can improve the overall ripple voltage. In my opinion, I would always make sure that we can deliver tons of power. I try and go for the highest C rating I possibly can fit into an application. Now, typically higher C ratings are heavier. So that's where I have to kind of give it a trade-off um, in terms of the C rating. I don't want to go too heavy to have a plane, for example, overweight. Uh, so that is one area where I do trade-off. However, in the buggies that I run and just bash, I go for the highest C rating that I possibly can get and also fits my budget and I roll with that. Uh, so the last point that we have here is use a capacitor bank. Now, cat packs, as it's uh, in brackets here, is also something that's going to help out in these certain situations. If you have high amounts of load, maybe you're running like a top speed radio controlled car that goes in excess of 100 miles an hour, or 160 kilometers an hour, this is maybe an area where you'd want to use a capacitor pack. Now we do have a video, I can link it in the description of this video on capacitor banks specific to radio controlled cars. However, the same idea would apply to helicopters, planes, and also boats if you meet the criteria there. So you can check that video out if you want to see more of, of that on cat packs. This is definitely something that will improve the ripple voltage if one of these is happening within your system. If you, even if you've extended your battery pack leads and now you're seeing excessive amounts of ripple voltage because of it, a cat pack is something that will help you. Uh, so that's pretty much sums up ripple voltage. We talked about all the things that I want to go through in order to get a good understanding as to how ripple voltage affects us, affects our system, and if we don't monitor it, it will eat up our wallets. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Like the video if you do. Please subscribe so that you can help, help me support the channel, and also I'll be able to see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.